All right, today I wanna to talk about salt sodium again because I just got done with a client and this subject just keeps coming up with the electrolytes and the issues on low carb diets. As you know, I've been doing keto coaching forever. I did carnivore for almost a year. I combine the two and so I'm a herbivore right now because you need the potassium. Now there's this sodium potassium balance that I'm telling you guys, you don't wanna play with mother nature. I explained before that I had a friend who ended up having a stroke with not enough magnesium. Now let's talk about salt because there's a rumor going out there with some gurus that, well, you can get your salt from me, but they're not factoring in the individual because some of you guys have leaky gut. In fact, a lot of people who do carnivore are coming from leaky gut, right? And histamine intolerance. What about the stress people out there with high cortisol? People talking about that or high blood sugar? No, because guess what? You lose a lot of potassium with cortisol, with adrenal stress. And now you're pounding down the salt or you're trying to get your salt for meat. So you're either getting too much salt or too little salt. People aren't thinking about the rest of their electrolytes like potassium. Now, if you don't get enough potassium in because you're a stressed person and don't sleep well, guess what? Your body holds on to salt. Like, it's crazy. And then people start to have high blood pressure issues and people start to have muscle cramps. You don't want to mess with your electrolytes. Don't listen to what a lot of people say, like these blanketed concepts of, like with keto people, oh, salt doesn't matter. We lose a lot via our kidneys. Well, guess what? You can hold on to sodium as well. So pound down the salt. Now carnivore people are saying, ah, you don't need salt. You just get it from me. And then people aren't having enough sodium or salt intake into their diet. And of course, they're having issues with that sodium and potassium pump. Their body starts to hold on to salt sodium and then you have that problem with cortisol and you hold on to it even more you need like oddly enough you need to consume sodium salt to not hold on to it and you need to eat potassium to not hold on to sodium and you need to drink enough water and you need to take in magnesium but really I'm talking about salt today if anybody's telling you that you get enough salt from your meat, they full of caca, okay? Probably for real, because they constipated. Oops, yeah, I said it. Um, a lot of you guys have leaky gut, you have cortisol problems, and so if you're not careful to not get in enough salt. Now, some people are so salt retented, they can't even do that recommended teaspoon. So then you would start off with like a pinch of it, and then you'd build up to a quarter teaspoon, then a half, then a whole. You want to build up to a teaspoon. What happens in the summer? You sweat like crazy. You're going to have crazy muscle cramps. You're going to compromise your heart to not get enough oxygen, develop benign heart palps, headaches, all type of horrible stuff, chronic dehydration, or you begin to develop being swollen. Your lymphatic system goes haywire because you're either consuming too much salt or too little salt. Everyone's different. You have to find the sweet spot. That takes work and a lot of people are too busy and like they just want to hear what someone else does and give me the math mathematical equation with my body weight and height. No. You have to experiment, right? Just pay more attention to your body. Are you a sweller? Do you get headaches? Do you have dry mouth, dry skin, dehydrated? Are you a stress monger? Are you not sleeping? Because you might be holding on to sodium. So you might want to do a hair analysis test. Because that stuff's really interesting to see if you're holding on to salt, sodium. A carnivore yogi has done a bunch and found out a lot of stuff with her iodine, with her sodium by doing the iodine skin test and doing the uh, hair and mineral analysis test for her sodium and her magnesium. Please don't just follow what people say willy-nilly. You need to do your own due diligence and find out this uh, client that I had today, she did a ton of testing. It was great. Not only did she do testing, but she did several with her thyroid and her A1C and her insulin. So you could literally see with her lifestyle changes, her numbers get into the right uh, balance 
with her calcium or phosphorus or her electrolytes or her iodine or her thyroid hormone or I said, did you test your TPO antibodies? She's like, of course. So I was like, yes. Did you test your insulin? Yes, of course. Like who gets their insulin tested? So I recommend insulin testing, hair mineral analysis test, the skin iodine test. Like y'all need to do this before doing, and I'll talk about this in another video, before freaking doing these stupid like electrolyte drink powder junk and some of them have iodine in them and women frack up their thyroid even more. I think Sarah did a video about that. We were talking about that. Y'all got to be careful. But if you are careful and you do the right, uh, make the right choices and work really hard, being high fat carnivore or ovivore, the goal is not to be 100% carnivore. You can be mostly carnivore. People don't like, people like, pick a side, this side or that side. The body doesn't work that way. Sometimes you got to oscillate between different dietary measures to find homeostasis. All right, guys, now I got to go. That was a quick thing on salt and it was not literally like eat this much salt it's literally test go do a hair mineral analysis test and find out what's going on with your sodium retention or low sodium and definitely the rest of your minerals and uh, now I gotta go I'm gonna talk more about vitamin d3 in the sun and d3 lamps they're so important to get that during the winter and also calcium this is what I'm researching right now and talking about it with my clients so Yes, if you guys want to learn more, you can go to my Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic, uh, where I present this stuff on stories every day, which I will do right now. Or you can go to my Facebook, which is Stephanie the Business Person, as in the body business. I'm 53, and on my way to be 54, I've been in ketosis forever, 13 years, and I love it. It's amazing. I've never changed this lifestyle because when you know better, you do better. Oh, I also am doing consultations. You guys know I'm moving, but you can also go to my website, go to the contact page and say, put me on the short list and I'll put you on. And otherwise you can comment here in the comment section below and ask for what you would like me to cover. Oh yes, like and share because the algorithms are getting really funky these days. I think you're hearing it from other people. So the best way is to share my videos with other people and I'm out.